everybody, and welcome to Transformation Church. Um, I'm Carolyn, and this is Hannah. Uh, this is your first time on our stream. If you could type, I'm new here, in the comment section, that would be very helpful. Yeah, and someone will get with you um, either after the service or during to talk with you. Um, if you want to stay connected, we have a lot of ways of doing that during, you know, this time of season. So, one of my favorite ways of staying connected with Transformation is our TC app. It's really easy to download. It's free on Apple and Google Play. All you do is download it, and you can go in there. You can see our upcoming events. You can watch the messages. You can give. You can submit prayer requests, which we love it when you do that so that we can pray for you. And you can even learn about Adventure Kids. So there's a lot of easy ways of doing that on the app. We also have our social media, which is on Facebook or Instagram, and we do a lot of encouraging posts each week on there, and it just helps you keep updated with, with what's going on at Transformation Church. Yeah, and then last but not least, we have our website. So we actually have a pretty new one that we redid and revamped this year, so I encourage you all to go check it out. We have our messages. You can give on there. You can do all the things you can through the app on our website, which I think is really, really convenient. And you can even learn about our mission and our vision and figure out who's our leadership, which is pretty cool. So I don't know about you, Carolyn, but I'm ready to do some worship. Let's do it. <laughs> Amen. We want to welcome everybody to Transformation Church this morning. Uh, man, just right where you are, sitting on your couches and in your living rooms, man, just let the power of the presence of God rest inside of your hearts today. Would you just stand right where you are, even in your homes, and let's worship God today, amen? It's a beautiful, glorious day, amen? Listen to this. I was buried beneath my shame. could carry that kind of weight it was my tomb listen till I met you yeah come on put your hands together I was breathing but not alive yeah all my failures I tried to hide it was my dream till I met you oh come on we call your name it's when we call your name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day That's true this morning. Now your freedom is all that I know. Come on, it's true. The unmade new. Jesus, then I made you. Come on. I need a rescue. My sin was heavy, but 
chains break at the weight of your glory I needed shelter I was an orphan but you called me a citizen of heaven when I was broken you were my healing now you're
today, God. Man, we're so excited to have Dorothy Clay with us this morning. She's our prayer director at Transformation Church. Dorothy, come. She's going to pray for us this morning. We need an awakening in our country right now. There is so much darkness, so much fear. And Dorothy, I want you to pray over our families, over our country, over COVID-19, and over all of this that's happening. We need God's presence right here, right now. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we come right now in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus. We just want to take this time to magnify you, to exalt you, to lift up your holy name, Father God. Because we realize you are all powerful, you're almighty, hallelujah, and nothing Absolutely nothing is too hard for you, Father God. We thank you that you are shelter in the time of trouble. We can run to you and we are safe. Hallelujah. You are a very present help in the time of trouble, Lord God. And you love us. You're gracious to us. You haven't left us. You have not abandoned us. And we are never, never alone, Father. You promised in your word you would never leave us and you will never forsake us. And you are, you are all your promises, Father, are yea and amen. You are, you are truthful and faithful to your word. And we can trust in you, Lord. Our confidence and our hope and our trust is in you, Father God, and you alone. Father, we just come right now lifting up our community, the United States of America, for a spiritual awakening, Father. We confess, Lord God, we have not walked in your ways. We have not honored you. We have not obeyed you, Father God. We've turned our own way, God. We've did the things we wanted to do, Father God. Not realizing you are the creator and we are the creatures and we need to humble ourselves before you, Father God. So we come right now in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus, Father, because your word says in 2 Chronicles seven fourteen, it says, if my people, which are called by my name, if they would just humble themselves and pray and seek your face, and turn, oh God, help us to turn today. We got to turn from our wicked ways and seek you. Because then you promised us that if we do our part, you will hear from heaven. You will forgive our sin. What a merciful God. And you will heal our land, Father. We need a healing in our land. Oh, we ask for Jehovah Rapha to heal us. Heal us, Father. We need you so much. Forgive us, God, for going our own way. Acting like we don't have to be accountable to you. And we do, Father God. So we ask you to forgive us of our sins, Father. We need you. We acknowledge you, Lord God. We've not lived righteous. We've not honored you and obeyed you. We have, oh God, we've lost our first love. We pray for a restoration in our communities and in our country, Father God. You said in your word that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We come, Father, please. Oh, wash us water than snow, God. Oh, God, take out the hardness in our heart and the stoniness inside of us. Help us, Lord. Wash us and make us whiter than snow, Father God. In your word, Lord God, you said, come, let us reason together. Oh, God, you want us to come. You want to work this out between you. You said, even though our sins are red and scarlet, you will make us whiter than snow. So, Father, we come humbling ourselves today. Saying we're sorry, forgive us. We want to do it your way, not our way. Your way is a righteous, holy way, Lord God. Your way is a way to blessings, hallelujah, and life abundantly. So we just come right now declaring that the United States of America belong to you, God. We claim every man, every woman, every boy and girl for the kingdom. Ooh, glory for your kingdom, righteousness, and true holiness, Lord God. We pray that the spirit of the living God will just move on every citizen of the United States of America. And even right here in our own community of Abilene, Texas, God, we claim that blessing over every household. Man, woman, 
woman, boy, and girl, every marriage, God. We declare, Lord God, we belong to you. You are Lord of Abilene, Texas. And so, Father, we thank you. And so, we're, we're so thankful that you, Lord God, are so gracious and long-suffering toward us, God. You wish that no one would perish, but that all would be saved. So, Father, we just thank you, God. Oh, God, we just praise you right now, God. Father God, we just also ask that you would just take away the fear, God. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind, God. We thank you, Lord. We can run to you. Hallelujah. You will protect us, God. Our confidence in you, Lord God. Take away anxiety and fear and hopelessness that so many are experiencing right now. Oh, God, we pray that you would turn their hearts to you. They will look to you and know that you are their divine provider. Your words say you supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory through yes. Christ Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. And we pray, Lord God, their eyes and their hearts will just be upon you to trust you, to lean on you, to depend on you. And know that you are trustworthy, faithful, powerful, mighty God. You're mightier than any HIV virus, yeah, influenza virus, or coronavirus. You are greater. Hallelujah. So, Father, we ask you would eradicate this virus from our land, from the world, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We curse the root of it now. And we say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, you can do it, Father. Yeah. But in the meantime, God, if you want to use that to draw our hearts to you, do what it takes, God. If you want to use the virus to get our attention, do it, God. To revive our country, to revive this world, do it, God. We want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Oh, Father God, we just pray that you would be exalted. You would be glorified. It's all about you. We've got mixed up, Father. We think it's about us. It's not about us, Daddy. It's all about you being exalted and glorified. You alone are God. And besides you, there is no other. You must be first place, not second or third. So we come before you right now thanking you for your goodness, for your, for your love for us, God but just caring about us greater than we and even more than we can imagine daddy you are daddy and you're a good good father so lord we just pray lord god you would be our eyes and hearts will be open to your greatness to your power to your love your majesty thank you even now for forgiving us of our sins taking away fear and anxiety and Lord God, your divine protection is all over us. God, we plead the healing blood of Jesus over every household right now in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you for every mother. Yeah. Oh, we pray that you would bless, bless the mothers, strengthen their hearts, God. Help them to cast all their cares on you, for you care for them. They are not alone in this journey, and never will they be. May they feel your comfort and your strength and your love as they just wrap their arms around their children and intercede for them and support them, God. We just thank you. Thank you, thank you, Father God. If we had a thousand tongues, we cannot give you the praise that you alone deserve. So we just want to say glory to God, hallelujah. Blessed, blessed be the strong name of the Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to Amen. Right where you are, just give a shout. Just give a shout of praise right where you are this morning. We thank you, God. You are our strong tower. Father, I pray we can, we can build our life on the foundation of your love, of your faithfulness, of your consistency. Father, let that be our desire this morning. In Jesus' name, we worship you.
Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you
Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You unravel me. Listen. Where the melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Come on, sing it. I'm no longer a slave.
I'm no longer a slave to sin For I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God All right where you are, right now let that truth wash over you. Let the reality wash over you today. Jesus, I am your child and I belong to you. Father, we pray your presence come and move. Let that reality sink deep into our hearts this morning as we've worshiped and adore you, God. Continue to meet with us this morning. We bless you now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Mother's Day looks a lot different this year. <sighs> Mommy needs a quarantine. And our moms may be spending a lot of time with their kids right now. A lot. Like, so, so much time. And even though they love their kids to the moon and back, Mommy, where are you going? sometimes moms need a little alone time. Mommy! You know, to recharge. Go talk to Daddy. Mommy! Where are you? But no matter what's happening in the world, their favorite way to spend time is with their family. In good times, in hard times. Mom! Hi. You're breaking everything! In uncertain times. Thank you, Mom, for making time for us every single day. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I ask that you would watch over us as we go to bed and rest, that you would speak to us in Bible stories and speak to us in... Hey, I just want to say my own thank you to all of the amazing women who are connected here at TC. Your strength, talents, patience, and sometimes restraint oh man, is, is to be honored and applauded. So to all the families out there, listen to me, do me a big favor, would you? Make sure the mothers in your lives know without a shadow of a doubt that you appreciate them. Make a card, shoot a short video, sing them a song, or brave the store and go get them some flowers, boys. Come on now. However you do it, make it happen. The ladies in our lives deserve to be honored, not just today, but every day. So right where you are, would you join me in praying over all of our mothers today? So pray with me. Father, I thank you, God, that you created moms. They are, without a doubt, the most incredible creatures on the earth, God. They do everything. They are empowered to do everything through your, the way you created them. And God, I pray we wouldn't take them for granted. I pray that we would operate out of a, out of a sense of honor for them. Uh, God, I, I thank you for moms. I thank you for my mom. I thank you for um, all of the mothers represented here in Abilene. God, bless them today and, and the days to come. God, we honor them and we give it all to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So now it's time to give back to the Lord. Are you guys ready to give? Come on. It's a great moment to do that. Uh, as you're getting ready to give, I want to tell you a story from the Bible. Go figure, right? It's from Genesis chapter 12, and it's all about a guy named Abraham. Now, Abraham was 75 years old, and he's lived in this particular town all of his life. He's got a nice life, nice family. He knows everyone in the town, right? He's comfortable. So God comes to him and says, Abraham. Okay, he didn't sound like that. But Abraham, I want you to leave your hometown, and I want you to travel to this land that I'm going to show you. 
God didn't even reveal the end destination. He just told Abraham, get going, okay? So the Bible says the next day, all right, Abraham loaded up and he moved. I want, I want to teach you a principle that I see in this story. In fact, uh, I see it all throughout the Bible. The blessings of God always follow obedience. Let me say that one more time. The blessings of God always follow obedience. In other words, we obey first, then we're blessed. And I know what you're thinking. If God would give me a raise, then I would be generous. But see, it doesn't work that way. Or if God would give me some financial blessings, then I would obey the Bible. And see, that's not how it really happens. Listen, when, uh, when we, we obey God, even though it's tough, even when it's hard, even when it makes us uncomfortable. That's a truth you need to latch on to this morning. See, that's how Christianity and faith work. Abraham went on to become the father of a great nation, the Jewish people. And he was famous, blessed, and important. And God blessed him with a family. In fact, the Bible says that all the people on the earth would be blessed through Abraham. But none of that would have happened unless Abraham, uh, or if he hadn't obeyed. Now, one of the big reasons we give is to obey God. We give generously because that's what the Bible teaches, even if it makes us uncomfortable. Um, man, we want to be obedient to God. The blessings of God will follow our obedience to God. So, I want to pray. We're going to ask God to bless the offering. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to pray that God would bless everyone who obediently gives to his purposes. So God, thank you right now that you're operating in this moment. God, thank you right now for every gift and everyone who's giving. God, I pray you shower out your blessings upon uh, everyone who's giving today, sacrificially unto you with a generous heart, God. God, I wanna be obedient to you in my giving and in my life. God, help us to operate in that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey guys, welcome to Transformation Church. Look, last weekend we kicked off a series called Parables, the stories Jesus told. We looked at a parable of the Good Samaritan and how we can live our lives with unconditional love. Now, this morning, we continue our parable series with another familiar parable that Jesus told, the parable of the servants in the vineyard. In this parable, Jesus begins with this common, well-understood premise, laborers who are willing to work hard and expect to be fairly compensated. The, the parable, however, takes an unexpected twist that leaves us with an uncomfortable truth. So let's look at Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 15. But the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is in household, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went out about the sixth and ninth hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle and saith unto them, Why send ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye see. So, when even was come, the lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. And when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. 
And when they had received it, they murmured against the good men of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first and the first last. Or many be called, a few chosen. All right. Now, now I want to examine this parable following a specific structure this morning. I call it the three U's. Clever, right? <laughs> no, it's not that clever. Anyway, uh, so it's uh, the usual, the unexpected, and the unsettled. We're going to use these three concepts to examine this parable. So number one, the, the unusual, or the, sorry, the usual. We, we start with the usual or the common uh, scene. A landowner looking for laborers in the town. This was a common practice in biblical times. It's even common today. Perhaps you, uh, you've seen day laborers who wait outside a home improvement store or something, hoping for an opportunity to, to you know, get a job. The landowner and laborers agree that they'll work for a denarius or a penny, as it said in the, um, the video, which is a common wage for a day's labor at that time. Very fair, very usual. Okay? Now, this scene uh, repeats four more times throughout the day. The slight difference is that the vineyard owner did not specify the exact wages for the subsequent, subsequent workers. Okay? I, he said, I will pay you uh, whatever is right. The landowner, that's what he said. So the expectation is that those who worked the fraction of the day logically would receive a fraction of the wage. This is the usual aspect of the parable. Right? Um, now, Here's an example. So take someone in the workplace today. You identify that, you know, with this, you know, you would identify with what is right or just in your workplace. For instance, so you work as an engineer at a software company, and, and maybe you started there a year ago. Now, when you were hired last summer, you missed the cutoff for the employee review cycle. And you would, uh, you would see all your colleagues getting their reviews and the salary bumps, the bonuses, and the additional stocks, right? However, since you have been there less than three months, they skipped over you. You got nothing. Naturally, you'd be fine with that. It's only fair because the, the others were there longer, right? And, and they should be compensated better. This is the usual, okay? It's, and, and it's commonly accepted, right? Okay, that's the usual. Number two, the unexpected. Now, let's examine the unexpected. The vineyard master pays the workers in reverse order. The last one is paid first. These last workers got a whole denarius, a full day's wage. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, that, that would be like me getting a bonus after I'd only worked a couple of months. What a generous manager. Although not explicitly mentioned, we may we can surmise that the middle workers were also paid one denarius, and, and they uh, they also must have been surprised with receiving a full day's wage uh, for only working part of the day. Well, that's pretty cool. He's a pretty good, pretty cool boss. I imagine that the first workers are thinking, uh, you know, and they're calculating one hour gets one denarius. I worked twelve hours, so let's see. I'll receive 12 denarius. I'm rich. See, but what happens, all right? The unexpected. These early workers got exactly the same wage, one denarius. What? That's totally not fair. I worked harder than the last guy. The earlier workers grumbled, but, but you paid us all the same. And they were mad at this kind of perceived unfairness, all right? So, so that's the unexpected. Number three is the unsettled. Now comes the unsettling part, the uncomfortable tension. The vineyard owner explains, friend, look, we agreed to your day's wages at the customary rate, and I I'm, I'm giving you what I promised, and you agreed to it, so I did you no wrong. There is no injustice, so take your pay and leave. 
Are you envious? Literally, are, you e- are your eyes evil because I'm generous? It's pretty harsh words from the landowner. Does the master's response sit well with you today? Or do his actions and words unsettle you? It unsettles us because it's contrary to our own sense of fairness and mediocrity. Okay? Listen, we, work, we worked harder, so we should get more. Also, because we worked harder, we feel we're superior than the other workers. Our superiority entitles us to more. Yet the landowner treated us uh, like an everyday worker. All is equal. Listen, Jesus leaves us in this unsettled state. And I wish to give you a moment to sit with the tension. Think, think, about, think of how this parable applies to you. Uh, with which worker do you identify today? What do the characters represent? So listen. In this parable, of course, the vineyard owner represents God. And the, and the different workers represent people whom God has called into his kingdom. Each different in life, situation, and attitude. The workers represent you, me, and all of us. Now, what about the work? What does, what does that represent? Okay. Do you see work literally as your daily grind you get up you fight the traffic you go to work you you work hard you skip lunch you you go to a meeting you write an email at the end of the day of the day you you earn your denarius as your salary or may i suggest that the parable speaks to a different kind of work that the, the pursuit of a salary or a career this work refers to work in god's kingdom in a spiritual plane listen ephesians 2 10 says for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. This work is a, an eternal, has eternal significance. It's, it's how God's kingdom is brought to earth through you and me. It may be the work of social justice or ministering to the less fortunate in our society. It, it may be evangelism, sharing the good news to your friends, leading someone to Christ. So how do we react to this work? For some of us, it's difficult. And for others, it it feels easier. And we wish we could do more of God's work. Perhaps some of us wish others would do more of their share of God's work compared to us. Listen, comparison is a dangerous tool of the enemy. To get your eyes off what you're called to and onto someone else's part in the plan. We like to assign levels to God's kingdom work. And our man-made levels of God's work, it might look like something like this. So you got, okay, you got full-time ministers. Okay, we'll put them at the top because they're full-time. This is what they do. They're called to be full-time ministers. So they, they got to be at the top of the heap, right? All right, what about, uh, what about the lay leaders in the church? Those people that give hours upon hours to the church. Uh, maybe they're next in the rung on the ladder or or how about those Bible teachers on Wednesday nights or, or, or that, that, that teach those classes and they put in all that time? Maybe, maybe they're next. And then you got your Sunday school leaders, your kids ministry, volunteers, and, and of course the janitor, the guy who cleans or the lady who cleans the church, he's all, they're all at the bottom, right? That's at the bottom. That's our man-made level of how we see God's work, okay? Within these man-made levels, we compare ourselves to others around us. So maybe unconsciously or maybe even consciously, we evaluate our own worth by comparing our work to the other guy. You know, we, we might become offended if God appears to bless others lower than us, more than, than they deserve. Or if he appears to bless us less than we think we deserve. Okay, guys? So I, I want to ask this question this morning, and I want you to really think about it. What worker are you? Do you see yourself as the last worker who does an insignificant amount of work yet rejoices in the unexpected gift from the generous boss? Are you that worker? Or or do you identify with the early workers, offended because your sense of fairness is called into question? Or are you the silent middle workers who were blessed by the denarius yet secretly feel like you deserve more when compared to the late workers? Listen, this parable teaches us that in God's eyes, and I want you to understand that this morning, we are important and valuable workers in God's vineyard. Different, but impactful in our own way. 
We have different roles, gifts, and talents, and we each ought to contribute to the best of our ability without comparing to fellow believers. Now, I'm going to discuss more about the different giftings when I preach on the parable of the talents later in the series. For today's sermon, though, I want to really encourage you. We're all in this story, guys. We all fall into one of these categories. Listen, the last worker, to those of you who feel like that last worker, uh, this parable ought to be a tremendous encouragement to you. You see, the last workers, are, they're not as strong or fit, so, so we're not chosen early in the day. You know, it's like the, the biblical equivalent of getting picked last for dodgeball during recess, you know, of which I always was, and I have no idea why, because I'm super athletic. Right. No, I'm not. But, but God, went, God went chasing after them, seeking for the last workers, not because he needed more workers, but because he wants to bless them and to bring them into his family. I hope you can see that this morning. So even if we feel like the last workers, the people that maybe didn't get picked first or even in the middle, or, or, or we feel, or, or, may, or maybe we, we, we labored into that lower level of God's work, okay, that, that's been labeled upon us. We're, we're not inferior or less worthy in God's eyes. In fact, God seeks us out and blesses us, the last workers, so generously. I want you to understand that this morning, if you feel like you don't have a lot to give, God loves you. You do have a lot to give. God loves you this morning. You know, to the early and the middle workers, here's the encouragement for you. To that, that more mature believer whose labor is more visible, right? Maybe a visible position, maybe for a longer period of time. We ought not look down upon or have an attitude of superiority towards those who have different gifts and roles. And I can't say to the hand, I don't need you. Rather, we must respect and honor each other within God's family. Check this out in Romans 12, 3-5. It says, do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, through, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to the other. This, then, is our first application of the parable. Number one. Jesus reveals to us our attitudes about ourselves, our worth, and teaches us to honor and respect one another. And here's the second lesson God has laid on my heart through this parable. I call it, number two, the uncomparable gift of salvation. And yes, I know that's bad English. Let me talk to you about a couple of people. Imagine one person who accepted the Lord as a teenager and committed himself to proclaim the gospel to the needy world. Throughout his adult life, he pastored, held revival meetings, ultimately preached the message of salvation to millions of people. I'm thinking of Billy Graham here. And when he died, he certainly received the crown of glory reserved for him. All right, that's the first guy. Now the second. This is one who disdained religion. He rebelled against God all of his life as a career, and he took advantage of the less fortunate and made himself rich on the backs and bro of the broken lives of his underlings. Listen. And then at the end of his life, he sees the train wreck he left behind. He repents of his lifetime of rebellion and accepts Jesus as his Savior. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Does this person also receive salvation when he dies? Does this last one really get into heaven, into eternal life in, in God's presence, just like the first one did? These are questions we all need to contemplate. Let me talk about my granddaddy, Bill, real quick. So my grandfather is my mom's dad. Uh, he resisted the, the invitation from Jesus all his life. Now, I'll tell you right up front. My mom worked on him for 30 years. She never stopped praying for him, believing that he could be uh, he could come into a relationship with Jesus Christ. But don't get me wrong, he was a good man. Uh, I mean, he loved and provided for his family. He served his country in World War II and in the Korean War. But he, he insisted on this independent life and, and self-sufficiency. But at 90 years old, on his deathbed, my grandfather repented and accepted Jesus as his Savior in his final, in his final days. 
Is his salvation genuine? Can God really redeem my grandfather? What is my grandfather's salvation compared to the, to the salvation of Billy Graham? Can the gift of salvation be compared? Well, let me just break it down. The parable of the vineyard uh, laborers teaches me salvation cannot be compared. That's why I, I refer to it as, as uh, earlier as the uncomparable gift of salvation. Salvation is God's gift to give to us who are undeserving, okay? God is so generous, so merciful, so loving that even the, the last one can receive his free gift of salvation. Same as those who followed Christ faithfully since childhood. Here's what God said in Matthew 20, 14 and 15. I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. I don't have... I don't have the right to do what I, oh, excuse me, I don't, don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Think about that for a second. God is so generous with himself, with his gift of grace to us, that it ought to leave us speechless. So don't try to compare, be envious, or feel entitled. None of us deserve the free gift of salvation. God is extravagant and gives grace to all of us, regardless of who we are, what we do, or when we accepted the Lord. Now you may ask, okay, pastor, can I live life as an unbeliever and disobedience to God? Kind of reveling in my life of sin, and then at the last moment, accept the Lord just before I die and be saved? Does that work? No, there's indeed an example of the last minute co conversion. Uh, the thief on the cross next to Jesus. He confessed his sin, acknowledged Jesus as his, as his sinless Savior, and the Lord promised him in Luke 23, Today you will be with me in paradise. However, to the person who wants to give this a shot, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Do you really want to gamble with eternity? Do you really want to slip into the kingdom by the skin of your teeth? Do you really want to chant spending eternity without God? Listen, life is too short. The Bible calls our brief moment here on earth a vapor. You don't know how much time you have left, nor the circumstances of your death. What if you die before you receive salvation? So, Listen, don't gamble with your life. Hebrews 4, 7 says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Listen, the only reason, the only reasonable option is to repent and believe in Him right now. Right where you are. This is the moment. This is today's the day of salvation. Don't wait. Don't hang on. Don't try to just get in under the skin of your teeth. Don't, don't just, just try to break in and, and live the life you think you want to live, thinking there's no consequences for that. I'm trying to tell you, He is rich in grace and in mercy. But listen, if you still insist to wait because you don't want to give up, what you enjoy now then you will be mistaken. We don't give up anything of substance when we accept Christ. Instead, we gain eternal life to enjoy now. This side of death, we gain a right relationship with God, the Holy Spirit to guide us and counsel us, a new family in the body of Christ, all wonderful gifts of eternal life we can enjoy right now. So why would you wait? Listen, when we think about it, this parable is not really about the vineyard laborers, is it? It's really about the master of the vineyard. It's about God. This parable illustrates not only the nature of the kingdom of God, but also about the nature of the God of the kingdom. And the most important element of God's nature in this parable is his extravagant gift of grace. So here, my friends is the main point of this parable and of this, this message. God is extravagant, and he chooses to bless the least, the last, and the undeserving with grace upon grace. God's way of acting seems unfair because he decides to be gracious, loving, forgiving, and merciful to those who didn't earn it uh, or work for it or even deserve it. But listen, that's God's economy. That's his kingdom where generosity and kindness reigns. 
You got to look at how right side up this appears compared to the world's perspective. So all of us receive this undeserved grace, whether early in life or late in life. The grace extended to my grandfather on his, on his deathbed is the, is the grace you and I live by every single day. And this grace comes by the cost of and through the path of what Jesus accomplished on the cross for us. Listen, may we, ne- may, may we fully grasp the extravagance of God's gift to us who did not work for it nor deserve it. Let us each have the attitude of the last worker who is overcome with joy for receiving the extravagant grace of the Father. I want to end things up this morning with a quote from the late Billy Graham. You know, he devoted his life to serving God, preaching the gospel to millions upon millions of people. Uh, Of all people, he may be the early worker and entitled to the bigger crown of glory uh, than the later worker. But listen, however, Billy Graham's words embody the attitude of gratefulness of the last worker. Listen, he said, I'm not working to heaven or I'm not going to heaven because I have preached to great crowds or read the Bible to uh, many times. I'm going to heaven just like the thief on the cross who said in that last moment, Lord, remember me. Listen, we're all that last worker. We are all the thief on the cross next to Jesus who receives God's amazing grace. Let's go out this week living in and enjoying the extravagance of the God of the kingdom. Listen, when the world cries out for punishment, God cries out for forgiveness. When the world reminds people of their duty, God seeks to show them his love. When the world demands that people be held responsible, God extends more grace. God seeks out those who are lost. He hires those he shouldn't. He pays more than they deserve. And he gives them his most precious treasure, his only son, for free. No matter what, let us be a people who will serve the master willingly today. Amen. I want to pray with you this morning. Let's pray. Father, right now, I thank you that you are a God who sees all of us where we are. No matter where we are in the, in the hierarchy we may label people in, Jesus, you see us all the same. You see us all as people that need grace, need forgiveness. They need a Savior. God, I pray right now for anybody listening to this message, if they are not in right relationship with you, God, if, if they're not uh, if they've been called into your kingdom this morning, God, I pray that answer the call. I pray right now, whether they're young and they're first to be called or they're, they're, uh, they've lived their life and they're at the end and they're the last to be called, Lord, I pray they'll say yes. Say yes this morning to the gospel. Say yes to the truth. Say yes to the Savior this morning. Ask Him to forgive your sins. Ask Him to be the Lord of your life this morning. Ask Him to come and reside on the throne of your heart. You'll see that even in this moment, no matter where you lie on the spectrum, you will be changed by his amazing grace. So Father, I pray, let that amazing grace rush over us this morning. Let it permeate our hearts today and let it bring change into our lives. God, I thank you in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer this morning and if you uh, asked Jesus to come into your life and, and you you, you know, he did the call of the master this morning. I want to tell you, man, the, the angels are rejoicing in heaven for you. Man, there is a, there's a party going on in heaven. There's a party going on right here at Transformation. Listen, I, I want to help you on this journey. So if you right now would say, hey, I, I did that. I, I either rededicated my life to Christ or I came to Christ for the first time or I need a right relationship with him. I just want you to type in the comment section right there, hey, um, I'm raising my hand. Just raising my hand right there. Just say, raising my hand in the comment section. Somebody's going to reach out to you because I believe, man, today is a new day for you. You're a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And I'm excited to help partner with you on this journey. Amen. All right, Transformation. So 
It's the end of the message. It's the end of the service. And you know what that means. We always do our transformation declaration. I, I want to shout this out all over Abilene. And I want you to declare it with us as we go out today. Because we believe in transformation. That everyone has a name. Everyone has a story. And everyone is loved by God. And because of Jesus, I am a life transformed. Man, I'm so excited to have been with you today. I pray you take this parable and apply it to your life today. Man, have a great weekend. Listen, it's Mother's Day. Make sure you take care of mom today. Do something super, super fantastic for us. Uh, make, make sure she feels loved. And man, I'm so glad to have had you at Transformation. So don't miss next week. It's going to be powerful. We've got some really exciting things coming up as we're going to begin to relaunch Transformation Church in the next coming weeks. So make sure to be looking on Facebook and on social media for up Updates that are coming soon. All right. God bless you guys. And we'll see you guys next week at Transformation Church.